I want you to be attentive. I'm going to I should round off this 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 uh, seeing the voice part three about the Jesus encounters, and I believe God that as the blessing of the Lord is with you, it will keep growing until the perfect day in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. Amen. Welcome again to another broadcast. We're rounding off the last thing we talked about. We talked about, this is the third episode of the Jesus encounter. And the last time we talked about, uh, yeah, if I can remember Patmos, we talked about uh, Johnny and the island of Patmos. And then uh, we talked extensively. You can go to my YouTube. Let me use opportunity to remind you, you go to my YouTube and search for Bishop Shea Jacks. Search for Bishop Shea Jacks. You will get some of my messages, the ones that we've been able to do thus far. You will get it there. And some of the series I talked about, that they, you know, seeing the voice from, from part one to two. This is the thought about Jesus encounter. You can go there, search on YouTube, on the social site, Bishop Shea Jacks. Just once you search, you will get it there. But especially the YouTube, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. So we're looking at Bethel at this season. We talk about Patmos, how John encountered Jesus in the island of Patmos. So but we're moving from there into we, we move from there to, to the to the encounter Paul had. We call it the Damascus journey. It's also in our YouTube. You can go and check that. And but now we're going to the third dimension, which is the Bethel. Bethel is the house of God. So and is the is the is the journey of Jacob in knowing God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. I said it earlier, you need to hone God yourself in this season. You need to. You can't stay there and say the God of the church you go to, the God of the man of God you follow. You need to own God yourself. You need to know God yourself. We're in the season that is the Bible says those who know their God shall be strong. Not for all, but those who know their God shall be strong and they will do exploit for God. They will do mighty exploit, but it is on the foundation of those who knows their God. So this hour we're coming, Jacob had had known and heard about the God of his father Abraham. We're going to look at some of those things, how Abraham met with God and how Isaac, I'm just going to give us tips of that. We're not going into the in-depth of it. We're going to look at Jacob, how Jacob, Jacob with all his cunning, with all his supplanting, how God met with him. The same way, that is what God does. He came to Abraham, he came to Isaac, he came to Jacob, he came to Israel. And Israel, what one, one of the, the few things about that the Israelites have not been able to learn, I mean spiritual Jews, which is the church. When you talk about the Jew, you're talking about the spiritual Jew, which is the church, based on what Romans 1 and 2 said, that we are the spiritual Jews, the church. But now the, 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 the physical Jews and the Gentiles, they become one to become spiritual Jews, even when we still have the physical Jews there. But God represents his church as a whole, and it represents the Jews also. But now we're looking at the spiritual Jew. We are the ecclesiastes of the Lord. We are the one, the remnant of the Lord. We are the one that have come into Zion. We are the one that our names have been written in the book of life. We are the one that is journeying in the tabernacle of Moses. Is the tabernacle of God. Is the tabernacle of heaven. So God came down and he revealed himself to each of these men. So it was at the time of Jacob that Jacob needed also to meet with God. You need to meet with God on your own, not the God of your father, not the God of your mother alone is good. But you need to meet with that God yourself. You need to know God yourself. John 17, 3. We might not have time to go there. I've, I've quoted it so many times on this, on, on different of our broadcast that, you know, that this is eternal life. It was the words of Jesus and this 
is eternal life that we might know the only true God and the Lord Jesus whom he has sent and that is my prayer at every broadcast to know, as you hear this message, to know, to create that hunger, that thirst in your spirit, man, to journey with God, to journey in knowing, in allowing God to reveal himself to you, that you will know the only true God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who he has said, this is eternal life. This is life eternal. It's different from everlasting life. This is eternal life. We will have time to teach on those two so that you will see the contracts, the comparison, and the difference. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is, this is the will of God for you to know him, to know Jesus Christ. It's not about religion. I've said so many times. It's not about religion. It's not about religion. It's getting darker outside there. And the light, the sons of righteousness will begin to shine. The sons of the kingdom, the daughters of the kingdom will begin to shine in the midst of that darkness. It will be a time the darkness will work for them to shine. So it's not a season where you now start complaining, you don't know what to do. It's a season where we need to know Jesus and will begin to shine his light to the rest of the world. God bless you, Reverend Mrs. Jacks, for joining me. That's my wife. God bless you for support. Thank you so much. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. So we're looking at Bethel at this time. How Jacob, the supplanter, met with God and God began the process of him walking with God on his own, not what was laid down to him. So we're going to look at we're going to look at Genesis 27. We're going to 28, but we're going to precisely start from 27 to see some of the things that happened before he met with God. And I want to say this. Uh, I want us to be attentive to some of these things, and some of it, I want you to go back and listen to them. From Genesis, we're looking at Genesis. If you have your Bible, will you open with me to Genesis, Genesis chapter 27? We're going to look on verse 1. From verse 1, we're going to look down, then we look at 28 also, but we're looking at it from verse 1. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his elder son, and said to him, My son. And he answered, Here I am. Verse 2, he says, See, here now I am old, I do not know when I may die. So now I pray you, take your weapons, your arrows and quiver, your bow, go out into the open country and hunt game for me. And prepare me an appetizing meat, such I love and bring to me that I may eat so that I can bless you as my firstborn before I die. Verse 5, but Rebecca, look at our mothers. Oh. These are godly mothers, loving mothers. But Rebecca heard what Isaac said to Esau. She heard. She heard. But God was watching. And when Esau had gone to the open country to hunt for game that he might bring in, verse 6, Rebekah said to Jacob, now she heard, now she's not saying, Rebekah said to Jacob, a younger son, see, I have heard your father say to Esau, your brother, I, I don't have time, I will have gone back to show you when she had, when she was, she took time for her to conceive, it took a while, she was barren for a while, but when she finally conceived, her husband went to seek the face of the Lord and God gave them a confirmation that there was going to be conception. And she went on her own to God while the babies were, you know, jumping around. They were in between. It was like a battle going on within her womb. And God told her the younger shall be greater than the elder one. So it was like Jacob was going to be greater than Esau. So she knew that for months, yet, but she wanted to work it out. She wanted to use her own strategy. And this is the what we're saying in the season. The strategies of men will fail. It failed even during the COVID-19. The abilities of men failed 
the abilities of the human mind failed because they were not ready to follow the rudiment, the patterns, and the mysteries of God. So she wanted to use her own strategy and look at what God, because God had a plan. He had a promise with High Abraham. He had a promise with Isaac. And he also had that same promise to confirm it. He said he entered in, when you go to Psalm, Psalm 109, 139, he said when you, when he has a covenant with Abraham. God has a covenant with Abraham. And what he did was to make a promise. When he got to Isaac, he revealed himself to Isaac and gave him as a promise. But when he got to Jacob, he took it to another dimension that whatever I have said to Abraham would become an oath to you. So he entered an oath with, with, with Jacob. And from there, when Jacob died, before he died, he entered a covenant, an everlasting covenant, not just a covenant now, an everlasting covenant with Israel. So from I from Abraham, it was a covenant to Isaac. It was what? It was a promise. To, to Jacob, it was when he had the encounter in Bethel, it was an oath, God swore with him, and the last one, which is Israel, which is the, for the whole church, is an eternal covenant, an everlasting covenant, a covenant that will not be limited to time, a covenant that is not limited to our space, a covenant that is not limited to the human mind, a covenant that is not just about man. He has a lot to do with God and then with man. So, uh, but she was trying to do that alone. So let's let's read further. Five said, Rebecca heard what Isaac said to Esau, his son. And when Esau had gone to the open country to hunt for the game, that he might bring it. Six, Rebecca said to Jacob, a younger son, see here, I have heard your father say, Esau, your brother. Bring me game. Make my appetizing me so that I may eat and declare my blessing upon you before the Lord and before my dead. Hey, so now, my son, do exactly. Look at what he told the son. Do exactly as I command you. Go now to the flock. From it, bring me two good and suitable kids. And make, those are goats, those are flocks. And make them into appetizing meat for your father. Something lovely, something delicious for Isaac. Such as he loves. You can look at that. Such as is there's something about food and blessing. There's something about food. He said, go make me this lovely meal and I will bless you, my son. So before I die, so that my blessing will come upon you. There's something about the blessings of the father, of your father. And I pray the same thing that is spiritual is the same thing that is physical. I don't want to divert from that. But there's something about the blessings of your father. If you have been privileged, I wasn't privileged. My father died when I was a year old. I didn't even know him. But if you are privileged, thank God for spiritual fathers that we have in Christ. So if you don't have a, if you have a biological father, no matter what is happening, make sure you always will receive the blessings of the Lord before he leaves this earth. There's something about your physical father, especially when the father is in Christ. But if he's not, he's your born magical father. Make sure you don't receive curses from him. And if something had happened, make your way to him. Make a way where you will have peace with your biological father or your spiritual father. If not, there's always a curse. Elijah said, it's going to come. Elijah will come. He said, even in the spirit of Elijah, we talked about John. God told Elijah, he said, that spirit of Elijah is coming back. And it came in the form of John the Baptist to reconcile the fathers back to the sons and the sons back to the father. So let there be a curse on the earth. If you don't receive the blessing of your father, you will receive the curse. And I pray in the name of Jesus, any of you that is watching right now, I pray I break every curse of the fathers upon you in the name of Jesus. Every curse that has kept you bound from your father, every curse, is that your spiritual father? Whatever you have done, we break that curse. And I pray that you go back to them. Find a way to create peace. Connect back to them and receive the blessings of the Lord. The blessings that comes from the father, whether your spiritual father, whether your biological father, they are fathers. 
They are coverings over your life. They carry blessings and they carry costs. And I want to say to the fathers, if you are watching me this morning, please be careful. Don't open your mouth, whether in your heart or in your mouth, to lay curse. I'm always careful, even when I'm almost to, to my children or to the spiritual children. We must hold our tongue. We must hold our heart not to release a curse. Because no matter what this happens, except God brings a spiritual father. If your father is linked, except God brings a spiritual father, there will be a spiritual. We have so many mentors, but one father is one father. One father that will come and release the blessing upon you, will cancel the curse and release the blessing. I don't have time. There are generational blessings. Even some of the things that Jacob said about his children, the spiritual father Moses came and changed some of those curses and turned them to blessings. So I pray for you. You need to take it. Fathers, please, we need to release blessings, not curse. If you have released some curses upon your children out of pain, please, take time. Call them. Call them like Isaac call. Call them and let them do something that you love and from your heart, bless them, including, including, including mothers. But it is very important when it comes to the fathers. They are the seed givers. They are the blessers. Blessings also come from the mothers. But there's some, there's a blessing that God has assigned to the fathers. And there are blessings God has assigned to the mothers. So it's very critical. Some people are struggling till now because of curses from fathers or spiritual fathers. And they will tell you, so what are we going? Are you going to keep struggling? You need to make peace with God and make peace with men. If they are no longer alive, God will lead you to a father that he has given to you. The same way we have biological fathers, we have spiritual fathers. And what we need from them is the blessings, not the curse. So I just needed to say that, please, it is very, very critical in these last days. The blessings of the fathers, it will go a long what you will struggle for for a decade, you will, you, will, you, will, you will accelerate and gain speed within a year. Some are struggling now because of lack of spiritual fatherhood. And this is why fathers that, need, that are in Christ, that are in Christ and father figures within the society must know that God has called you to release blessings. The authority that God has given to you is to release the blessings of the Lord. Not to curse. You must hold your tongue. You must hold your heart. He said, be quick. The scriptures in James said, be quick to hear. Be slow to speak and be slow to hunger. So be slow to speak because when you speak, there's life and there is death. There's curse and there's blessing. And that was what Isaac did. Isaac knew he was about to go and he needed to release a blessing on his first son. Who was not aware of it? Jacob wasn't aware of it. Rebecca wasn't aware of it until he said it out and he told Esau. And while he was talking to his first son Esau, Rebecca, their mother, heard it. As she went... Because a prophecy had come earlier that this Jacob is going to be greater than Esau. She wanted to use her own way. But it led, it, it led into a bad way where it, there was a commotion between the brothers. We will read further. But I just want to say this. That the blessings of the fathers will come upon you. Yeah. Connect back with your father. Is it that your physical father? Your biological father, your spiritual brother, connect back with them and the Lord will keep you and the blessings of the father will follow you. So let's read further. We're reading Genesis 27. So I am in um, verse 10. And you shall bring to your father that he may eat and declare his blessing upon you before his death. And Jacob, verse 11, and Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, listen, Esau, my brother, is airy, is a hairy man. I'm a smooth man. 
is of a smooth skin. Suppose my father feels me. I, I will seem to him to be a, a cheat, an imposter, and I will bring his curse on me and not his blessing. Like I said, it could be it will be curse or blessing. Either way, it can be both. And, and Jacob knew that I'm a smooth man. So am I going to do this, God? How am I going to do this? But the maker, look at what the, look at what the mother said. So, but his mother said to him, and at this time, Isaac was blind. Isaac was blind. He couldn't see very well. His eyes, not totally, but his eyes was dim. So he couldn't see very well because of age. So his mother said to him, the mother said to him, on me be the, your curse, my son. Only obey my word and go fetch them. Rebecca said, let the curse be upon me. If curse is going to happen, and we know that that is not possible. It's not possible. So 14, Jacob went and got the kids and brought them to his mother. And his mother prepared an appetizing meat with a delightful odor, such as the father loves. Such as the father loves. And Rebecca took the eldest son best clothes which was with her in the house you know i read this and i was wondering how come you know Esau a grown up man married man at this time Esau was married with wives so how come his clothes were with his mother it's another topic for another day let's let's leave that but it's a mystery it's a mystery it's a mystery about clothes there's something about your cloth. There's something about damage, whether physical or spiritual. There's something. The same way there's something about food and blessing. There's something about the garment and blessing. Some blessings don't come until you put on some garments. Whether physical, whether spiritual. There are dimensions in the realm of the spirit. But we, we if God will take the priesthood and give them a garment, there's something about garment in the realm of the spirit and also in the realm of the natural so the some of his garments were with the mother and he put it on jacob his younger son jacob needed to wear the garment of esau 16 says she put the skins of kids on her hand on the smooth part of his neck some of the, those goats that they, they, they skinned it the skinned ones they had to use the air to cover his neck and cover his hand. Let's go further. And she gave the, the savory meat and the bread which they had prepared into the hand of his son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Like I told you. And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done what you told me to do. Now sit up and eat of my game so that you may proceed to bless me. This was Jacob in deceit. He walked in the deceit of his mother. Mothers, please be careful. Don't work out the plans of God for God. I will say that again. God has a plan for your children and you, God has given you, it is of necessity, it is of spiritual importance for you to know the destiny, to have a, a, an inch of the destiny of your children. And because that was what happened to, like I said earlier, that was what happened to Rebecca. Rebecca, access was given in to her to go to see the destiny of Esau and Jacob. And by the virtue of that revelation, she got to know that Jacob would be greater than Esau as she was on her own. Trying to work it out. God will always reveal to you, mothers, this is some of the spiritual blessings that God has given to you to use according to the scripture, to the word of God, not to pervert, not to twat them. Not to pervert the patterns of God. Not to pervert the ways of God. If you're a Rebecca, you're a mother. Or you're, you're an aspiring mother. You're believing God to be a mother one day. You must know what God has said about your children. If you don't know, you need to go and ask God to reveal to you. You need to know. 
Because you have the carrier. You are the one that birthed that child. Or those children. And you need to know. God wants you to know. So that you can be positioned. Position yourself in the place of intercession and prayer. And guard them that this is what God has said. Not your own strategy. So if you have made that mistake, get back to God. Get back to God. If you are like Rebecca of what we're reading here, get back to God. Don't use your own mind. Don't use your head. It is time to you. The revelation came to your heart. Let your heart, your heart follow God and follow his will for your children. Don't tell them this is what you need to do. This is what you must do. This is what he has, this is how it, it will be done. No. You will be hindering them and hindering God. And this is what Je this is what Rebecca did. And Jacob said to his father, we read that Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found the game to quickly my son? And said, Behold, the Lord your God has caused, caused it to come to me. To him in what? In deception. God had made up his mind to bless Isaac, to bless you know, Jacob, but not in a cunning way. And you will see what will happen in, in, in chapter 28. You will see how he met with God and God had to process those things out. All the cunning, all the imposter, all the supplanting, all the deception, all the deceit. That you can't come into the kingdom, you can't come into the promise. I can't enter an oath with you with this. You must be straight with me. You can't put your hand in corruption and come into mortality. You will die. Mortal sin don't come before God. Immortality dwells before him. He is immortality himself. So you can't use those gimmicks. Mothers, please, let's stop. Those, those canal gimmick, canal strategies and principles of the flesh the acts of the flesh don't help god to do what god god is more than able to do what he said he will do in the life of your children stay in the place of prayer stay in the place of guidance stay in the place of discipline stay in the place of the world don't lead your children against god against their destiny because God will still come after and come after them and will make it straight. And when he's going to make it straight, you will not be there. And if you're there, you won't be able to stop God. Father, we thank you. So Jacob, his father descended that so fast. So Jacob went near to Isaac and his father felt him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hand is the hand of Esau. You can He knows the hand of his son. Because Isaac loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. This thing has been for a long time. Where some parent, a father will love the daughter, the, you know, the mother will love the son, you know, the father. This thing has been there. So this, in, the, in this case, 23 said, he could not identify him because his hands were airy like his brother Esau. So he blessed him. 24, but he said, are you really my son Esau? The sensitivity of a father. Fathers, we need to be sensitive. Did you hear me? We need to be sensitive. Once there's a sensitivity in your heart, there's a pulse in your heart. Wait and check. Check. Cross check. Because God is saying, this is the sensitivity of a father. If he had known the blessing, there's always a blessing that God had for, for Jacob. Not a deceptive blessing. You don't get the blessing by deception. And God needed to correct that. And God was waiting. Okay, so this is what you want to do. I have my way. You are, there's a way that seems right to a man. It will lead to destruction. But there's a way of God that leads to life. That leads to peace. That leads to joy. That leads to eternal testimonies. So he said, bring me this game. And the father said, bring it to me. He ate it. 
that I may bless it. And he brought it to him, and he ate it, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said, Come near, kiss me, my son. Look at the sensitivity of the, of the father again. And he came there and, and kissed him and smelled his clothing and blessed him. He smelled his clothing. He smelled his clothing. There's something about his clothes. He smelled it. The odor, the aroma of his son. There's something about him that in the midst of also, when you see your son, even when you cannot see him, but when you smell him, you say, no, 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 this is my son. This is the smell. So fathers, we need to know do you know that your sons have their own saying, their own odor? Apart from body odor, there is an aroma that God has given unto them. Jesus said, we are the aroma of God. We are the aroma of Christ. <clears throat> we bring life to some, we bring death. So if there are spiritual aromas, there are physical aromas, not just the body odors. But a rumor that God has given to there are some people the moment the says <clears throat> the says that a rumor for some it, it it repels them it restrains them. Their intention was to help, but the moment that a rumor comes, a bad aroma that the enemy came by night. He said while men were sleeping, came and pour a bad odor, a bad aroma on them. Change the order of God that God has given to them. So where they need to find favor, there's always a block road. Because the enemy, while they are sleeping, the enemy, and that is why as a believer, you don't need to just sleep all through the night. Yes, yeah, sometimes you need to rest, but not on a regular basis. That you don't wake up to sleep. The enemy is not sleeping. While you are sleeping, the devil is roaring around looking for ways and strategies to devour you. He said, I've been looking for Peter. When Peter said, I'm going to, he said, I will not deny you. Jesus said, you will deny me three times before the, 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 the cock cross. Three times you will deny me. But I prayed for you because the enemy came to sift you. The enemy, the devil, he said, he des Satan desires you. But I prayed for you. So prayers are going on your behalf, but you need to wake up and also pray. So the aroma that was on his body, the father smelt it, Isaac smelt it. And now blessed and said, may God give you the dews of the heaven and the fatness of the earth and the abundance of grain and new wine. <clears throat> 29, he said, let people serve you and nations bow down to you and be master over you, the brothers, and let your mother's son bow down to you. Let everyone be that cost you be cursed and let everyone that favors you with blessing will also receive that blessing. And as soon as Isaac finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob was scarcely and gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father Esau and his mother came in from the hunting. Oh God. Esau had also prepared his own food and brought it to his father and said to him, Let my father arise and eat of my own son's of my of his son's game, and you may bless me. This now was not Esau. And Isaac's fa his father said to him, Who are you? And he replied, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Can you remember what Esau did when he sold his birthright? The fact that Esau sold his birthright, he sold his blessing. Don't sell your birthright. I pray for you that the spirit that God has given to you about your birthright will your first sons. I pray for first sons. First sons, first daughters, you are the one that opened the womb. The birthright will not be taken away from you. You will not use ignorance. You will not use deception to sell it out. You will not, because of food, of what you will eat now, of what you are going through now, sell your birthright in the name of Jesus. When you sell your birthright, you sell your inheritance. When you sell your birthright, you sell your destiny. When you sell your birthright, you are pouring out the blessings that God has for ordained before time, before you were conceived in your mother's womb. God knew the time that you were going to come in as the first child. There's a blessing that comes from the first child. Is it a first son 
a first daughter, there's a blessing that follows it. And that blessing will follow you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that in, if you are the first son and the first daughter from your, from your parent, I declare over you that the blessings that follow for sons will speak over your life. If you have been seen, you will see it in a greater proportion. That the glory will continue to increase in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you mothers, you need to rise in, your, in the strength of the Lord. Not in your human strategy, your intellect. And learn to begin to pray. For your first sons and your first daughters. Because they belong to God. There's a blessing the devil knows. And Esau, he sold that in the previous chapter. If you go to 26, he sold it because of what? Food. Now, the blessing was going to come. Now, through us or food. The father said, come, bless, give me my lovely meal and I will bless you. After eating that meal, he was not going to bless him before eating the meal. It was after the meal. He ate the, 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 the you know, the prepared stew with, with the meat, with the, with the, you know, with the good meat. And, you know, it was so fantastic. And that was his, his, his favorite. And he blessed Jacob. The blessing was made for Esau. But initially Esau had sold his birthright. Because blessings, the genuine blessings will only follow the birthright. And he has sold it to Jacob. So it's not about the mother of Jacob alone. Jacob also had a cunning lifestyle. A deceptive lifestyle that God was waiting for. That with me, you can't journey with me with this character. You won't journey with me with this nature. I will circumcise you. I will cut that corny, that imposter, that supplanting spirit nature in you. I will cut it off. So this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Let, let's, let's continue. We're, we're, we're still reading. So Isaac, Isaac... Isaac trembled and shook violently and he said, Who, where is he? Who hunted game and brought it to me and I ate it before you came? And I blessed him and yes, he shall be blessed. I blessed him. He said, I blessed him and he shall be blessed. I blessed him. I blessed your brother Jacob. And indeed he shall be blessed. This is what I told you about fatherly blessing. The blessing, even when he got it the wrong way. Some of you that got it the wrong way, go back and make, make, make amendments. Let there be restitutions so that there can be true restoration. So you don't keep struggling in some things. The blessing that needs to be hundredfold, some will be limited to 30, some will be limited to 60. It must, be, it must not be on the foundation of this. Whatever God has said he will do, follow his pattern. Build, God told Moses, build according to the pattern that you have been shown. The pattern is the scripture. We need to build according to the scripture. Anything that is not according to the scripture, don't follow. Especially the words of Jesus Christ and the New Testament. It's very critical. I'm not setting aside the Old Testament. Both the old and the new makes up the covenant, makes up the Bible. But as we give priority to them, we give priority to the words of Jesus. We give priority. The things that Jesus said, as written and read in some of the, in the Bibles, is given priority to. They follow with other books, the apostles, the epistles, some of the disciples, and of the prophets, and of the Psalms. The Torah, the law, all of them, most of the leaders came out from there, including some of the things that Jesus said. But in a full, in a complete dimension, he said, this is the fulfillment of that which has been written. So, let me, let me read further. So Esau heard the words of his father and he cried out with a great and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me. Even me also, oh my father. He had lost the birthright. But the virtue of losing the birthright because of food, he lost the blessing. He 
even if Esau, even if Jacob had not made any attempt to come, he lost it because he sold his birthright. He counted the birthright as nothing. Some of you are walking in ignorance. Your first sons, your first daughters, there's a blessing that comes with that. Go to your father. Go to them. If they are not, go to your mother. Let them lay hands on you. Do something that will make your heart merry and bless you. If you don't have, if you know there is no peace, you have spiritual mothers that you can go to. Or spiritual fathers that will lay the spiritual blessings of God upon you. Thank God for spiritual fathers and mothers that understands the mind of God, the will of God, the agenda of God for you. And that will bless you in accordance to the blessings of God based on the scriptures. We need those blessings. If they don't come, there will be struggles. There will be a curse in the land. I told you earlier, there's no blessing that we be cursed. Both can't work together. No, is it a blessing or the curse? And I pray, I break every curse in your life. Every, every fatherly curse or motherly curse over your life is broken in the name of Jesus. Every curse that you have been carrying for years and you keep struggling, you don't know how, put your life in order. Get back to God that is your father and as much whatever you can do on the earth, connect back to them. And if there's no connection, connect to a spiritual father, a spiritual authority that will release a blessing upon you. And don't put your hand and sin. Jesus told the woman that they were about to kill with stones that was caught in the act of adultery. He said, I do not condemn you. He told them, Who, which of you have not sinned? If you have not, then be the first to, to raise the stone and throw the stones. And they, they, one by one, say from the least to the greatest, they dropped the stones and they left. And Jesus, writing some things on the ground, stood up and told the woman, if they have not condemned you, I have not condemned you. But go and sing no more. Sing no more. Don't go and begin to sing where there have been a deliverance. The blessings of the Lord is upon you. You will not put your hand into sin. You will bring in legions of demons. The demons saw and they said now that you have been blessed. And you are putting your hand in an accursed thing. The house becomes empty is inviting to them and the demons he said the demon that left was one he will not bring more terrible dangerous demons the same way the spirit of god possesses man demons also possesses i said i will not bring legions so that the last state of the man is worse than the first so the cause that he thinks he's carrying will not be worse because the blessing that God has given to him from a father, from the mother, whether physically, biologically or spiritually, he had put his hand in the accursed thing. And he will now realize that things are not just working in line with God. It's not about material things now. It's about the will of God. It's about the agenda of God. It's about the priorities of God. It's about the assignment of God. The devil can give you all those things. The, the, the devil is not a match for God. He is a creation of God. God sits and throne and is watching him. The judgment has been given unto him already. He has lost the battle. But there is a time for him. So it is very critical in these last days. Don't put your hand. You are the blessing. You are a first son. You are a first daughter. Don't put your hand in an accosting. Remove your hand from sin. And let God do what God can do alone. Mothers, stop helping your children to put your hand in an accosting. thing. It's not about how good or intellect or deceptive. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It is the will of God. Everything that is unrighteous will not come into the kingdom of God. God alone will take the glory. It's not going to be by any man. It's going to be God. It's going to be Jesus. There's nothing too big or too small for him to do. Let him do what he wants to do. 
Let God do what he wants to do with your children. He has a plan. He has an agenda. And he's going to work out everything. There's a timing. There's a pattern. There's a purpose. I will see it again. There's a purpose that he has for them. There's a timing that he has for them as they grow in stages. And there's a pattern. Don't choose your own pattern. Don't choose your purpose for, for your children. You didn't create them. Don't choose for them. God, you're a steward in the hand of the Lord. There are stewards in your hand. You are just a steward before God. God kept it in your hands. Even when they are grown-ups. Whether they are young or they are grown-ups. I am the no no no, it's not about that. Because God will hold you accountable. God will hold you, fathers and mothers, God will hold you accountable for those children, whether they are young, still young, and they are grown up today. God will hold them, but God will hold you. Be a parent that will always release the blessings of the Lord. Some will tell you they are going through some spiritual wars because of where they came from. You don't pay back evil for evil, even when you know that you have some generational causes that you are going through. Go to God and always release the blessings of the Lord. Jesus said, love your enemy. He said, the enemy of a man is his own household. Even if it is your household, go to God and bless the Lord and bless them. Don't pay back darkness for darkness. Darkness for darkness is darkness. It is only light that can overcome darkness. So stay in the place of light. Stay in the place of blessing. Don't curse back when there is a curse coming in. It becomes a double curse. And I pray that 2022 will not be a double curse for you. It will be a double blessing. To you, to your home, to your work, to your business in the name of Jesus. But if only you will stay in the place of blessing. Don't put your hand or your mouth in that casting. Don't allow curses to begin to come out from your mouth. Let your mouth be seasoned with grace. Let it be seasoned with grace. Let's, let's continue. I needed to say that. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We're still reading that same. We're reading the same 27. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. So we're reading. I just said, your brother came. The father and I said, your brother came craftily. In a crafty, corny, deceitful, and he has taken your blessing. He has taken your blessing. Look at the, those things about, about Jacob. Crafty, corny, deceptive to take the blessing. Now let's continue. And Esau repelled, he not rightly named Jacob the supplanter, for he has supplanted me two times. He took away my birthright. Look at what Jacob also did. Jacob knew that Esau was also ignorant of the birthright, but he knew the importance of the birthright. He knew for every birthright. Let me have said it. Birthright. When you have the birthright that God has given to you, blessings follows the birthright. It's not something you work for. There is a blessing attached to the birthright. If you don't put your hand in an accosting, if you value it, you don't put your hand into sin. You don't sell your birthright. If you value it, if you know that the blessings of the Lord is behind that birthright, you will not sell it. And Jacob knew about that. So he, he, he deceptively, because of food, took Esau's birthright. And God was waiting for him. He took the birthright by giving him food. He, he took his blessing by giving Isaac food. Let me say that again. This is Jacob that God is going to deal with when he got to Bethel. He will go to the, land, to the house of Laban and God will, will flush out every cunningness and every craftiness. And this is what God is doing. Some of you, you cannot come into destiny. You can't come into God with that cunning, that cunningness, 
that deceptive God will flush it out God will cut it out God will circumcise your soul he will circumcise your mind your emotion he will pull down every plan that is not his plan is your plan but God will not bless it he won't bless your plan he will bless his plan God will not answer your prayer he will answer his prayer so when you know his prayer according to the scripture and you pray according to his prayer which is the scriptures he will answer that he won't do your bidding he won't do what you want done he will do what he wants done if jesus will come and say not my will oh god can this cup this hour can this cross pass over me Jesus prayed and he said the sweat that came from his face was thick as blood. While the disciples were sleeping, James, John, and Peter, their time came that they woke up. He said, while the groom, the bride might sleep, but a time when the groom will go, the bride will come. It will wake up, it will fast, and it will pray. And that season is now. If you don't wake up, something will wake you up. If you don't wake up, you know that something, the devil will wake you up. He will wake you up with his own beating. He will wake you up with his own attack. He will wake you up with his own demons. When God is trying to wake you up to your blessings, waking you up to your birthright, is waking you up to your inheritance. And you don't value your birthright, you don't value your inheritance. If you don't value your birthright as a son, as a first daughter, you don't value as a child of God. As a child of God, you must value your birthright. You are born. Say, he that is born of the Spirit. You are born of the Spirit. Overcome the world. You are born of God. You are fathered by God in 1 John 5. He said, he that is born of God. You are born of God. So there is an inheritance. There is a, a birthright. It's called birthright. There is a right that God has given to you because you are born of God. But with most child, most sons and daughters, children of God lose it because they put their hands on in a, an accost thing. What they look for is their belly. It's what they want to gain now. They are not interested in God. And what they are interested in God is, their, is the hand of God, not the face of God. He said, it's, it's, it's not all that called me Lord that are Lord. It's not all my sons that are sons. The sons that God has received are sons that he has been able to discipline. He will chastise them. And this is what he, what, what he the plan that he had with Jacob when he got to Bethel. We're going to read about, read about that in 28. God was going to cut off the cunningness that you can't join in with me with this your imposter. You can't join in with me with this your defilement you can't join it with me with this kind of your sex immoral life you can't join it with me with this nature of theft you can't join it with me with this lies you can't join it with me with this perversion you can't join it with the sins come i will need to cleanse you remove that garment wash off cut all those nature out of you then we can now join it and I will take you to places that you've never dreamed of. Things you never planned for because the blessing, the inheritance will always stay with the birthright. You are born of God. Don't put your hands into sin. We win by righteousness. In the, on this broadcast, my priority is to stay in the place of righteousness. Grace. Grace abounds where there is righteousness. You don't see where grace is as sin begin to increase. No. Wherever you find grace, righteousness will begin to increase. You don't stay in Christ that you've been born again for years and you still keep putting your hand into righteousness and you sit there. You will lose the birthright. Even you've lost it because you put your hand into, into righteousness. Yet, you are a son in the kingdom. You are a daughter in the kingdom. But you are living like a slave. And I pray as a prodigal child that you will come back to God. I pray to some of you that are listening. Get back to your parents. Go back to them. 
Get back to your parents. Your father and your mother, some of them have not seen you for years. Get back to them. Restore back to them so that the blessings of your father, your biological father, or your spiritual father will come upon you, or your spiritual mothers. So that they, you will not keep struggling and struggling until you die. Not touching the will of God. Not touching the glory that God has for you. And you wonder what you so many deliverance, you have gone for deliverance and, and still nothing is happening. Because you are not connected back to God. So that the blessings can come upon you. You can come into the inheritance of God. Inheritance is not what you work for. It is by birth. It's not what you work for. You don't come into the inheritance by what you do. You come into it because you are born into it. But you must follow. You must follow God. You must follow his will. You must do what he wants done. Not put your hands into sin. He can't deliver you today and you go back to sin. God, I'm sorry, you go back to sin. No. You must walk in the path of God. In the path of righteousness. In the path of holiness. He said without holiness no man can see God. You can't see God. God won't show up. If you don't want to, to, to walk in holiness, even if you are dirty, even if you are defiled, he will come and he will clean you up and bring you holy and make you holy before him. But you don't go back to those dirt. You don't go back to sin. You don't join the company of those that mock God. You don't join the company of those that put their hand in unrighteousness. Whether big or small, there's no little or big sin. There's no big lie or little lie. Liars go to hell. He said, liars won't come into the kingdom of God. Lie is a spirit, is a nature. It's not just what you see alone. It's a lifestyle. He said, the father of lies is the devil himself. He's the father of all liars. So don't follow him. He's the devil, your father. When you lie, what you're saying is to affirm and confirm that the devil is your liar, is, a, is your father. So stay in God. Stay in the truth. Stay in righteousness. Win by righteousness. Don't be like, like Jacob that used deception to, 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 you know, to deceive Esau to get his birthright. He got the birthright by deception. He got the blessing. By, but God was waiting for him. Let's read further. We're still reading 27. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. So we're looking at we're looking at him 27, 37, and Isaac answered, Esau, I have made Jacob your Lord and master. I have given him all of his brethren to him. Look at the blessing. For servants and with corn and with new wine, I have sustained him. When, what can I do for you, my son? Look at what happened. Look at what happened. God has given him the blessing. It's not about what he will do alone. He will just do things and you will realize that things are working because the blessing of the Lord is upon him. The blessing of the birthright is upon him. 30. Isaac said, there's so many things I want to say. Let me just, let, I don't want to do it. Isaac, his father answered, the blessing and the dwelling shall come from the fruitfulness of the earth and from the dew of the heaven. By your sword. Now he was not blessing. He was not blessing Esau with the blessing that he, he, he there's always still a blessing for him also. But it's not the initial, the genuine blessing that God had ordained for him before he sold it. And he said, By your sword shall you live. Look at it. He said, By your sword shall you live and serve your brother. But the time shall come when you will grow restive and break loose, and you shall tear his yoke off your neck. And I believe that time has come. I prayed for you in the name of Jesus. Every yoke that has kept you in bondage in the name of Jesus. Every lack of your ignorance that you have put your hands in, in, in sin. That has kept you in bondage. That you have not enjoyed the blessings of the birthright. And you have not enjoyed your birthright and the blessings. I break that yoke over you in the name of Jesus. That you will come into your birthright. You will come into the blessings of the Lord. You will come in. I 
declare right now in the name of Jesus, whatever you need to do, go and do it. Make it right with God. Make it right with your father. Make it right with your mother. Fathers, make it right with your children. Bless them. Bless them. Bless your sons. Bless your daughter. In the name of Jesus, I break every cost and every yoke, every struggle over your life in the name of Jesus. I release the birthright that you have lost. I release it back to you in the name of Jesus and the blessings of the Lord will come upon you. You will not struggle. You will not struggle. You will not leave back the sword. You will leave back the blessings of the Lord in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That the birthright and the blessings of the Lord, you will come into the inheritance of God. You will come into the inheritance of God. And Esau hated Jacob. And this is the issue. When things happen, don't be like Esau. Don't. Don't hate. Don't allow the spirit like Joseph. Don't allow the hate to fill your heart. Hate will hinder you from getting the birthright back. Even if I prayed now, don't allow the spirit. The nature of hate is not the nature of God. What that hate will do will hinder you of coming into the birthright and into the blessing and into the inheritance of God. Like I said earlier, you don't use darkness to overcome darkness. It is light that overcomes darkness. It is good that overcomes evil. So hatred will not bring the blessing. Look at what he said. He said, Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are very near. And when he is gone, I will kill my brother. Can you see? Hatred leads to death. Hatred will lead you to kill, which will eventually lead to death. Is the nature of the devil. No matter what has happened to you, if your birthright has been taken, you can only get it back through love. Love God, love the people. Love God, love the people, not hatred. Hatred will lead you into the place of killing, of death. And the birthright will keep running and moving away from you. The blessing, the inheritance that God has ordained for you. You wonder some people will do some few things and they will just come into their inheritance. But because they carry the blessing, they carry the birthright, they carry the blessing, they carry the inheritance. They've come to know the mystery of birthright. Both spiritually and physically. And they've come to know the blessings that follows it. That the inheritance that follows the birthright. So don't allow hatred. Like Joseph. Joseph's heart was open. While he was in the prison. His heart was open to God. And God kept. And this is what God did for, 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 for Jacob. When he, got, when he left Bathsheba. Bathsheba was where his father and his mother were. Let's, let's read further. So death, I pray, I pray, I need to pray for you that God will break every spirit of hatred, every spirit to kill your brethren, every spirit to, to bring to death that which God wants to bring to life in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit of hatred. Hatred is mother. We break that spirit from you in the name of Jesus. You will not kill. You will not bring to death in the name of Jesus. Life will be your portion. The spirit to forgive. The spirit of love, the spirit of compassion that will propel you and position you into the place of your destiny will be your portion in the name of Jesus. You will not walk in the spirit of hatred, but the spirit of love. It will permeate your spirit, your soul. God will fight for you on the basis of love, not hatred. The best war the best victories in the season of war is won through love. You will take your rest like Joshua and God will say, this battle is for me. To a level where the cause of the enemy will not be able to be enlightened. As you begin to dance in God's presence, God will begin to fight your battle because you love in your heart, not hatred. 
no spirit of unforgiveness that hatred will bring to death but the Lord will bring joy Father we thank you we give you praise so my son do know what I tell you arise now when this had happened when Rebecca had seen what has, has happened he now told Jacob get up now I needed to read it for you to understand because it, at, the, at the encounter that, that Jacob was going to have in Bethel, he was not aware that he was in the house of God. The house of God is a place, is a place where the presence of God is. Let me say that again. The house of God is not just the churches that we see around. That is good. But the house of God, which you are the house of God, everyone should be the house of God. But not everyone is the house of God. Not everyone is the house of God. The house of God is where the presence of God is. And when he got there, God revealed himself to him. And there, now the journey is just starting. So let me read further. And the words of Esau's elder son were repeated to Rebecca. It was sent, sent for Jacob, the younger one. And he said, you know what? My brother Esau comfort himself. Your brother concerning you by intending to kill you. So now my son, do what I tell you. Arise, flee to my brother in labor. In Haran, linger and dwell with him for a while until your brother's fury is spent. When your brother's anger is diverted from you, he will forget the wrong that you have done. And then I will send and bring you back from here. Why, why should I deprive of both you in one day? Look at mothers. Mothers. Some mothers have lost their sons because of that, or their daughters. And God is delivering you. Stop it now. Don't follow your will. Follow the will of God. And stop bringing enmity between your, your, your children. Follow the will of God. Follow the love of God. Follow the mind of God. Follow the scripture. And let God build them. In love, not in hatred. And Rebecca said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Eth. These wives of Esau, they, that Jacob's wife of the daughters of eight such as the Etite girls around here what good would my life be to them so Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and said and commanded him go and marry in one of the women in the land of Canaan verse 2 said arise go to Pandoran go to Pandoran hmm. to the house of Bethel your mother's father Take from there a wife of one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Verse 3, may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you until you become a group of people. Verse 4, may, may he give the blessing he gave to Abraham to you and to your descendants with you that you may inherit the land he gave to Abraham in which you are a sojourner. Look at the promise. He gave it to he gave it to Abraham as a covenant, rather, he gave it to Isaac as a promise, and he's now giving it to, to you know the that's that's that that covenant and that oath to Jacob as as you know that promise as an oath. So God needed to now meet with him to introduce himself and to begin to flush out and begin to cut out. Look at verse 5 and Isaac. Send Jacob away. He went to Pandoran to Lebanon. But told the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, the Esau's mother. Now Esau, Isaac had, had blessed Jacob and sent him to Pandoran to take him a wife from there. And then he blessed him and he gave him a child, saying, "You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan." Seven. And the Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and had gone to Pandoran. He had gone to Pandora and says, And Esau, and Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please Isaac, his father. So Esau went and, you know, Ishmael took, <laughs> he took other wives again. Let's, 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 